Good evening, everyone. I'm Otis Livingston, and welcome to the show. The 2018 Major League Baseball season has begun, and that means Ed Lucas has been to another opening day. For the 79-year-old Jersey City native, it marks the 63rd straight opening day, all 63 as a member of the media. Ed is also blind, and he shares his story of growing up in poverty, dreaming of the big leagues, and someday working with his superstar heroes in the book, Seeing Home, the Ed Lucas story. And I'm joined today, luckily, by... Ed Lucas and his son Christopher, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having, having us. us. And Ed, start us off by taking us back to Ed Lucas, a left-handed 12-year-old pitcher, and the accident that happened that uh, changed the course of your life. It was October 3rd, 1951. Came home from school, watched the Giants and Dodgers on television. My father was a Giant fan. I grew up a Giant fan because we went to the Jersey City Giants farm team to watch them play. All the time, most of the players went up to the Giants later on. But I came home from school, and the Giants were losing. And Bobby Thompson came up in the ninth inning against Ralph Wanker. My father had his rosary beads out, praying for his Giants. They hadn't won to the, since the last, the 30s. And uh, Thompson hit the home run off of Wanker, high inside fastball. <laughs> and... Uh, my father started screaming and yelling, went to get the dishes to put them out on the table, and uh, he dropped them. <laughs> so he was not too happy, and I figured, I said, uh, Dad, I'm going outside to play ball, and I grabbed my glove. I didn't want to be around <laughs> after he broke the dishes. And uh, I went outside, got a couple guys to play ball, and I was a left-handed pitcher. Threw the ball, and the line driver came back and hit me between the eyes, and that, that was the last thing I ever saw. And you had already had vision problems before that, but that, like you said, was the last thing you saw. So that was a life-changing event. Uh, also, another one was once you went to Holy Family School for the Blind and met Sister Anthony Marie. Talk about the impact she had on your life. Sister Anthony Marie was wonderful. She uh, was a teacher there, plus like a house mother. She, we stayed there all week, came home on weekends, and... Uh, I would be walking down the hall with my hands out like this. And one day she came up, slapped my hand down. She said, Eddie Lucas, we walk with our hands at our side at all time. She, I said, but sister, I'm blind. I can't see where I'm going. She said, isn't that a shame? We're all in the same boat here. And you better pick up your oar and start rowing. Your parents were really big in, in give, instilling confidence in you. Your mother reached out to a number of teams and players on your behalf um, so that you could meet them. And one of those stars was Phil Rizzuto, and he ended up having a lifetime impact on you as well. Yes, he did. We went to the American Shops in Newark, New Jersey, where he worked and many other uh, ball players worked there. Yogi Berra, Ralph Franklin, Gene Hamaski, to name a few. And Phil was working there that day. We were there. My mother spoke to him. I didn't know she was talking to Phil Rizzuto at the time. I was with my father, looking at some clothes. And then Scooter came over and he said, uh, Hey, Ed, uh, how are you? My father said, Ed, the school, the Phil Rizzuto. <laughs> and he's, he said to me, I understand you love baseball. I said, Yes, I do. He said, You got to keep your spirits up, you know. Yeah. He said, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to give you something. I was sort of shocked, and he said, here's my phone number. Huh. And you call the old school to any time you want. He said, if you want to just talk, baseball, or if you're down about something, don't be afraid to talk to me. A couple of weeks later, he called me and wow. said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm listening to the radio. He said, I'm going to come and take you out to dinner. And that started a 56-year relationship. And it seemed like whenever the, you had issues or you were down, Scooter was there to lift you up, as, as well as some other people, but Phil Rizzuto seemed to stand out more, more in, in the book. Oh, yes, yes. He, he went out of his way to make sure, you know, and some of the media at first gave me a hard time. Mm -hmm. How can a blind person do this? Right. Standing by the locker and taking up space and taking up space in the press box. Two, two seats, because I had my guide with me. Yes. And uh, so... One day, Scooter heard about it, and he said to me, listen, I'm going to drive you home. So he drove me home, and he said, tell me what happened. I said, well, you know, some of these guys, I want to tell you something. Don't listen to those naysayers. He right. said, don't listen to them. He said, I'm going to tell you a little story. 
I was trying out for some ball team, the Brooklyn Dodgers. And who was the guy testing everybody for Brooklyn? It was Casey Stengel. Mm -hmm. And Stengel uh, told me after a couple of days, he called me aside and he said, listen, I don't think you can make it too small. He said, why don't you get yourself a shoeshine box and go around, be a shoeshine boy. You make more money. You'll never make it in the majors. He said, I never gave up. And I don't listen to the naysayers, and you never give up. He said, you do what you want. You went to college, you studied, and uh, work hard. And he ended up being a Hall of Famer. So he was an underdog. He knew what it's like to overcome uh, situations. You know, his his height was a challenge. Uh, they didn't believe in him, but there he was out on the field with the Yankees, winning World Series, going to the Hall of Fame, and just being an all-around great guy. Right. Let's do a rapid fire, because you were around a lot of big-time stars, <laughs> presidents and things like that. But you grew up a, a Giant fan. Talk yes. about Bobby Thompson, just real quick, a little, little rapid-fire thing we got well, going. Well, Bobby Thompson hit the home run of uh, Ralph Branca, mm -hmm. but uh, he became a friend, uh, uh, a great guy, and he uh, came very close to me. He would call me, and, you know, I started a golf tournament, and he played in the golf tournament every year. The, uh, the celebrity uh, classic with Phil Rizzuto initially, now it's going into his 26th year this summer, right? Right, that's okay. right. Okay, Joe DiMaggio, what do you mean? Joe DiMaggio, well, he was very, very good to me. He scooted brought me in to meet him, and he said, hey, what kind of pasta do you like? I said, <laughs> Chef Boyardee, said, Chef Boyardee. He said, get this boy a bowl of pasta fazo and learn some real Italian food. <laughs> Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, he was always one to kid around, and mm. he would kid around with me, and I asked him one old time, his dad, I said, Mick, would you like to take a picture with me? He said, uh, why would I want to take a picture? He said, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. <laughs> I said, but Mick, I think of you, you know, with the blonde hair and the physique that you had and then you swung the bat. I could see 51. He said, really? You think of me that way? I said, always. He said, let's take a picture. <laughs> what about Jackie Robinson? Jackie Robinson, my father said to me, Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City was going to have the first black man playing in professional baseball. The Jersey City Giants were playing Montreal in April of 46. And uh, so we went to the game. My father said, this is history. You have to learn this. So I saw Jackie Robinson play, hit a home run. And uh, Christopher, for you, this had to be a labor of love to work on this with your father. I know you heard the stories before, but to actually <laughs> put them down into uh, into a book, Seeing Home. I, I recommend it for anyone to sit down with, whether it's your parents, your grandparents, if they're still around, even if you're not writing a book, just, just listen to the stories because they're not going to be around forever. And in our case, you know, I was able to share my dad's story, which many, many great sports stories, but... It's for anyone, because mm -hmm. everyone faces up. You could be short like Mr. Rizzuto, blind like my dad, but everybody's got something that they're they're struggling against, and if, if he can do it, anyone can do it. And let's finish up this interview with this. You said, baseball took my sight, but gave me my life. What did baseball give you? Gave me the opportunity of something to do that I wanted to do, and with the encouragement of my family and Phil Rizzuto and um, other people in baseball, uh, Jackie Farrell of the Yankees, they all encouraged me. They all allowed me to go on and do what I wanted to do. Incredible. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, Christopher and Ed Lucas. The book is Seeing Home, the Ed Lucas Story. Thank you guys so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and we'll be back with more sports right after this.